The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazic Seeds. Werner Tobin on the Sharp Edge today, joined by Greg Stewart from Mazic Seeds. Greg, how's it going? Hey, Byrne, a beautiful July day here in Woodstock. And a cool day at that. And I want to know, big question, obvious question, what's Greg Stewart doing in a wheat field? Hey, don't tell anybody you saw me in a wheat field, okay? Uh, you interviewed James Hammerton here today. Tell us about James and his stripper header. Right. So James farms with his family here close to Woodstock, and he's been trying the double crop soybean idea for a few years and has moved to the stripper header with the idea of getting the wheat off sooner so that he could gain three, four, five days earlier double crop soybean planting. That's the plan. So here's James and a close look at that stripper header. Hey, James Hamilton, Woodstock, Ontario. Nice of you to join us here this afternoon. You've gone down the road of a stripper header on your combine for wheat. Tell us the motivation behind that. Well, Greg, um, we've always had a hard time getting harvest done timely enough to get double crop beans in. And we we're really hoping that with this machine, we could maybe get out here three or four days earlier, get the wheat off while the straw is tough, and maybe get beans in ahead of a rain. That's the whole idea. Right. So how many years have you tried double crop soybeans after winter wheat? After wheat? Uh, two or three times, perhaps. And success? Minimal. Minimal? Yeah. And you feel that if you could get, if you could squeeze five days out of this wheat harvest, that that would be a, a game changer? Definitely. Yeah. yeah especially if it's going to rain. Right on. But so, uh, some pros and cons of the stripper header. You're going to leave all the straw in the field. How do you balance that price of straw, leaving the straw in the field? Where does, where does that work in your mind? Uh, that's a good question. I think what we were looking at was we could sell other straw and maybe just sacrifice this one farm, try to hold on to the organic matter, maybe try to have some of the nutrients wash out of the straw and, and just kind of throw everything at it and see what would happen and sort of maybe forget about the dollars right. for a field and just see how it can work out. How, how long will you plant these double crop soybeans? I mean, will you go to the 15th of July, the 18th of July? Where will you pull the trigger on trying to make double crop soybeans work here at Woodstock? I think from previous experiences, maybe the 20th of July, unless it's forecasting really, really hot and dry after that. But we might, we would probably push it to then with everything considering. Right. And then, and then stop after that, yeah. Good, good. Yeah. And so, uh, the uh, the question about the straw still intrigues me. Uh, could you harvest this straw, you know, with sort of a hay type operation, forage type operation? Could the straw come off still uh, after you planted the soybeans, or or is that uh, complete uh, uh, lunatic fringe? It might be a little lunatic. I'd definitely like to try if somebody showed up with the right machinery on the right day. But in theory, you could leave it here until it got nice and crispy dry, and cut it and bale it pretty quick. Yeah. And uh, if, it, if a rainstorm came up, just pull out and, and leave it be. It has potential. I think there's quite a bit left that you could probably harvest again, you know, given the right machinery. Right. And there shouldn't be many rocks. That would be the largest concern. Yeah, yeah. But Very it would good. be pretty cool to try. I mean, we'd have everything then, wouldn't we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, James, the stripper header is new to you as well. Talk to us a little bit about uh, how it's working, uh, the pros and the cons, and, and what, what actually is going on there at the front end of that stripper header. Okay, so basically it resembles a disc bind and it's a covered hood and underneath of it there's a backward spinning rotor with stainless steel fingers that spin backwards and literally just rake up through the wheat. And in a perfect situation, I believe it's supposed to just pull the kernels right out of the head, leave the chaff and the entire head on the ground. And then basically just add a little bit of straw we get sucked into the combine. So it takes a combination of the right header height and ground speed and wheat conditions to get the perfect scenario for the stripper header to work and it prefers it to be a little bit wetter wheat. So what is your moisture in this wheat here today, James? Mm, 24, 24%? Yeah, we'd and like to see it a bit drier than it's that. It's doing an okay job? Yeah, it's doing a great job, yep. Yeah. The, the downside might be the combine. It's Wet wheat's kind of hard to keep in the machine, so we're driving a bit slower, trying to keep it into the combine, but right. um, you know, 16 to 18 would be ideal. We could probably be clipping along pretty good, I would think. Right, but yeah. I guess in the big double crop picture, you kind of need to push it into that 22, 24 if you're gonna gain if you're gonna gain the days. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, what about down wheat? Uh, this field is standing really nicely here. 
But if you get into a wheat that's lodged, how does the stripper header perform? It does very, very well, actually. It set her down on the skids, and um, so it's about three or four inches off the ground. And most wheat isn't any closer to the ground than that when it's flat. And it rakes up through it really, really well. Oh, wow. And then leaves a mat of nasty green straw on the ground afterwards. So as Excellent. long as there aren't any rocks, everything's <laughs> totally fine. Excellent. But, so, a quick uh, comment on the soybeans. You're going to plant soybeans that are shorter than you normally would plant uh, in terms of you must be 3,000 heat units here. Uh, how long a day bean will you plant in this double crop world? I think uh, Mazex has picked out something closer to 2,600 heat units. Right on. And, and population, uh, how many are you going to lay down? Uh, I'm, I've been talked into 200,000. <laughs> Some people have suggested 300,000, but probably closer to 200, yeah. Right, See what right. happens. And, Reasonable uh, seed cost. What is it going to take you on this field, soybean, double crop soybean yield, to uh, keep you excited about stripper header, uh, wheat, double crop soybeans? How many bushels do you need to make this uh, work for you? Uh, 20, 25 would be really, really nice, depending on harvest conditions and moisture, of course. Yeah. That would be a good, good thing to aim for, yeah. You'd, yeah. you'd keep stripper, you'd keep the stripper header around at 25 bushel beans. Well, yeah, and it's fun. I think we'll keep it around just because it's something different and it's yeah, kind yeah. of fun. Anyway, yeah, there aren't yeah. many stripper headers in Ontario. To sure. go look at one, where did you go? Ontario. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was closer down near Dresden. A fellow okay. had one and his cropping had changed a little bit and uh, he was looking to sell it. So happened to fit on our combine. It was Very just nice. kind of a lucky turn of events. Hey, James, thanks for your time today. No problem. Thank you. So there you have it. Greg? I don't see a lot of stripper headers around Ontario. Yeah, I, although stripper headers ha have pretty good exposure worldwide, uh, there's there's a handful maybe in Ontario. The first one I've seen is here today. Yeah, and from a per strategy perspective, props to James here for putting this all together, making the commitment to a stripper header, sort of to make a better soybean crop. Yeah. So really committed, James is really committed to the double crop idea and uh, willing to you know, make whatever adjustments, uh, uh, changes in approaches that it's gonna take. And you know, we, we, thought, we talk about three or four, five days maybe advantage. Well, in the double crop soybean world here in this part of Woodstock area, three or four or five days could make or break your double crop soybean. So it's, uh, it's, an, it's, an, awesome, uh, it's an awesome approach. Hey, uh, another great episode of The Sharp Edge. Thanks for making it happen. Thanks, Bern.